Hi, this is Paul Duvall from Stelligent. I'll be going over the quick start guide for the open delivery platform, the continuous delivery open platform on uh, GitHub. You can see the uh, link here. Um, from the README, you can click right on the quick start guide. And then you'll go through six steps here. First thing you'll do is, um, if you're not already signed up for Amazon Web Services CloudFormation, you'll do so by clicking this link. You'll click on sign up now. And then you'll go through the steps of either um, signing up for CloudFormation if you're already an AWS customer or signing up for AWS and CloudFormation. What that does is it gives you access to all the different resources that are used um, throughout setting up this open continuous delivery platform. Next thing you'll do is you will uh, create EC2 key pairs. So you'll go to the EC2 console, you'll log in. So now you'll click on create key pair. You'll enter the name development, click create. You'll download this and you'll store it in a safe location on your computer. You'll be using this later. So now we'll go to step three, which is adding a Route 53 hosted zone. Route 53 is a part of Amazon Web Services and it's a scalable domain service, which allows you to have programmatic access to make configuration changes to your domain. So first thing you'll do is you'll go to the Route 53 console. Then you'll enter in the domain name that you already own, so through a uh, domain registrar. And you'll click on Create Hosted Zone. So if you had access to something like example.com, which you see here, you would, and then you would enter that. So again, you have to have access to this domain for this to work properly. Then you click on Create Hosted Zone. And then it gives you a delegation set. This delegation set is, is used uh, later on as a part of setting up the open delivery uh, platform. As it mentions here, you go into the domain registrar, um, you know, register.com, GoDaddy Network Solutions, so forth. And for that domain name uh, that you entered in the previous step, you'll update the name servers for your domain name with the delegation set. So you see the delegation set. You'll add those uh, DNS entries into your domain registrar. So in step four, you're going to run a continuous delivery setup template. You're going to be using a, a templating language called CloudFormation, which is a part of Amazon Web Services, which allows you to define how AWS resources are managed using a JSON-based template. And so what you'll do is you'll click on this link. It'll bring up a wizard. Click Continue. And then each of these parameters are actually defined in the Quick Start Guide. So you, if you're just do, doing some testing, you can, you can um, use some of the examples that are listed here. So I'm going to give it a unique application name. I'm going to give my GitHub uh, user ID, my email address, a domain that I own, which is devopscloud.com. Obviously, you can't use this. It won't work for you. And then I put my password. I use this as the key that we defined before, development. Then I click on, I acknowledge that this template may create IAM resources. That's identity and access management resources. So you click continue. Continue again. And close it out. And then you'll wait about 10 minutes or so um, for the platform to, to get created. So while these stacks are being created, you're going to get an email from AWS as a part of this template, actually. Um, using a tool called Simple Notification Service. So you'll get AWS Notification Subscription Confirmation. So just click on Confirm Subscription. So go to the CloudFormation console and you'll see that three different stacks have been created. This first stack here is the one that you created as a part of the, the wizard process. Um, these other stacks are created as a part of the template itself. So one is a, applies a bucket policy to uh, simple storage service where it stores some files that are used in the template. Then the other thing it does is it uh, launches a Jenkins stack. So it mentions in step five that you go to the Jenkins dashboard. So you go to the Jenkins dashboard that was created as a part of this platform setup. And in order to get to that, you go to the CloudFormation console, which we were just on. And then you click on this Jenkins stack. And this is not literally this Jenkins stack, but it's 
you'll see that it's called platform setup dash Jenkins stack and then you click on the outputs tab and then from here you can just click on the value so it says the domain key and then the value and click on that and you'll see that it launches a Jenkins continuous integration server and that was all scripted you can actually look at the, the script as a part of uh, what's been checked into github so now you you can sign in with the default username and password you can change this as soon as you log in and now you can actually run the continuous delivery pipeline so in order to do so you'll go to the update delivery pipeline configuration job so I'm going to click on that I'm going to click on build now you'll see that there are three build parameters that I can enter so the first one is the uh, URL uh, to get the artifact we're just going to use Jenkins itself um, you can use any um, war that does not require configuration um, in order to uh, uh, deploy it at least as a test so you just paste that in here and then you're going to enter the domain and this is the domain that you set up um, in step 3 when you set up uh, route 53 as I mentioned I have access to DevOps cloud and then for the production database IP I can just leave that empty and then I click the build button So that was successful. So now I'm going to click on the Start Delivery Pipeline. You can see that also um, in this guide. You click on the Start Delivery Pipeline job, and then you're going to fill in these parameters. Stack name, um, and the other option is uh, to deploy to production. The only thing we're going to be putting in is the stack name. So I can give it a example stack and this is just for testing purposes so I'll put open delivery then I'll click build this is going to build out the uh, a record so it's going to be open delivery dot devops cloud dot com of course your domain is going to be different and it's actually going to walk through a pipeline and the pipeline you can see here is it goes through these various jobs as a part of this pipeline it runs the of course the start delivery pipeline that was successful um, and then it runs the um, uh, create target environment but prior to that it runs the puppet module build then when the create target environment so it has a instance and all the configuration that uh, for that instance it's a Linux um, environment this is all configured it's all scripted as a part of a cloud formation template um, and in addition to that it runs um, some puppet uh, configuration so it applies some dynamic configuration once the instance is set up it, it applies things like installing um, Tomcat server and things like that and then finally once you have an environment up and running this is all part of this pipeline so you don't have to do any uh, additional steps here then it deploys the application so it gets that war file that you had entered uh, previously and then you have a working um, application so let's wait for it to walk through this pipeline, but then you'll get an email um, indicating where the environment's been set up, how to SSH into it, and then uh, ultimately you can just click on a button um, to uh, see the working application. So as a part of this, it's going to uh, you also get an email from GitHub because it creates a, a public key that gets added to your account. Um, in addition, you're going to, as I mentioned, you're going to get a couple emails. One is SSHing into the environment. The other is the application being deployed. So it gives you a link to um, to the IP address that's been configured as a part of the uh, environment setup. So you can click on that. Now it's just the IP address, so you'll need to add the application. So in this case, you had uh, where we had deployed Jenkins. So you'll see here. This is based on the configuration. So if you had the uh, the deployment configuration. If you had the deployment actually um, modify the permissions so that you could deploy out here, then it would work. But just so you know, uh, or just so you see, um, the uh, Jenkins server was uh, deployed out to this uh, environment, um, and the environment was uh, was set up as a part of this whole scripted uh, infrastructure deployment, this whole open continuous delivery platform. So that should do it for now.
So you can contact us by going to ElasticOps at Stelligent.com. That's ElasticOps at S-T-E-L-L-I-G-E-N-T dot com. And we look forward to hearing how uh, the open continuous delivery platform is working for you. Thanks.